minutes past noon. We're glad you stayed with us. Uh, welcome back to the program. This is the Sunday edition uh, right here on KTN News. And we have new panelists who just joined us. That is Abel Oyeyo. Is going, uh, is going to come in handy, especially on matters of uh, budget and how the national government has awarded the county government as far as the allocation is concerned. But there's something interesting that we didn't talk about in the first hour that has everything to do with the extended handshake. This time around, not between the two uh, protagonists, that is Raila Odinga and President Uru Kinata, but not even about the two deputies, but a handshake that apparently took place between the president and Mombasa Governor Ali Hassan Joe. Let's listen in to what the Mombasa Governor had to say a while back. Niliboshika mkono zamani likuwa siyo strong kama sayi, lakini nona iko... ...used to speak at each other. Mimi nikipata jukwa, natafta sababu tuwe kusema. But now I'm going to tell you, we're going to speak with each other. Hello, Peter. Hawa ndugu zetu walikuwa wanasema mambo ya badilika. Sisi tukawaambia tuko pamoja. Sasa mambo yamebadilika kweli tuko sasa pamoja. Governor Joho vile amesema yeye yako tayari sasa tuongee pamoja badala ya tutupiane maneno. Maneno haya haisaidii yalete shida. And there you go. We've literally seen that handshake between the Mombasa governor and President Uhuru Kenyatta. Dismas, uh, we've already seen the famous handshake between the president and uh, former Prime Minister Raila Odinga. And before 2017 election, it was almost impossible to see the Mombasa governor and the president almost, they were attacking each other basically every now and then. Are we seeing some sort of a mature politics once again coming to play? Well, number one, when you look at uh, that handshake, that handshake, the, the big question you need to ask yourself is whether or not it represents uh, the cumulative interest of uh, Wanjiko and Mora and uh, Nafula. Whether your views or your interests as a Kenyan are actually captured. And it's not uh, hard to come to the sad conclusion that the handshake is a, is a convergence of uh, a few politicians' selfish interests. So that when they want to run for an election and win, they'll be throwing stones at each other. For instance, Governor Hassan Ali Joe knows for a fact that if you are campaigning, you want to be an ODM governor from Mombasa, and you are seeing having handshakes with the, the president, a jubilee person, probability of winning is zero. So you have to go to the highest mountain and shout all manner of insults. You recall the same guy who used things that are one may not use on national TV for fear of uh, libel and slander. But mm -hmm. you know he spoke about thieves and drunkards running a particular show. All of a sudden, he's forgotten that. And uh, the only thing he can describe to us is uh, how firm the handshake is. So for me, I think uh, the earlier we realize that these politicians, in fact, do not represent our interests as a nation, the better for us. Because it only needs Raila Odinga to wake up one day in the morning and he gets annoyed and he said, uh, I had a handshake with uh, President Kenyatta. He's not playing to his side of the deal. Mm -hmm. And before you can say your name, there'll be animosity. So the question we need to be asking ourselves is, for how long are we going to trust individuals instead of uh, trusting institutions? For, for, for some reason, we, we, we place too much trust in individuals at the expense of uh, institutions. These are human beings driving specific political agendas. Ask yourself, a committee was gazetted a few days ago to look at uh, the issues and uh, give feedback within one year. Have you seen them anywhere? Have you heard them that now they've started sitting, they're going through the TGRC report, they're going through the Dung report, they've uh, disappeared into a thick forest, which is why you need to go back to what um, some leaders indicated, someone like Musayla Mdavad indicated, that this handshake must be structured. And if you go through World Bank, although people do not respect World Bank so much, but they've indicated that for any handshake to be a success, mm -hmm. it must start from the grassroots. People say Mandela and the Clark had a handshake, but they did just not meet over a cup of tea and coffee or whiskey. They, they were background negotiations, so that the handshake is a cumulative reflection of the people's interest. Mm -hmm. Even Ishak Rabin and Yasser Arafat, they did not just say, okay, guys, let's go and have a handshake. No, they were negotiations. So as we ask ourselves, now Governor Alias and Joe says, President Kenyatta has got a very firm, strong handshake. What about the garbage in Mombasa? Who is collecting that garbage in Mombasa? Who is taking care of the interests of the people who woke up early in the morning to go and vote for Joe because Raila Odinga said, this is uh, my candidate? Is now Mombasa shining? Can you go to Mombasa 
without the fear that uh, you're going to jump into garbage. No. So this handshake can only be a success when it translates to money in my pocket. The handshake can only be a success if the budget read by Rotich mm -hmm. reflects my interest as an entrepreneur. If it doesn't, then the handshake, in my view, has got a hidden agenda. Let me give Abel a chance to speak about this. Abel, this must say that uh, handshakes, mere handshakes, will not solve the problem, problems in this country. Do you agree with him? Well, I think we need to understand. Thank you so much for the chance to contribute. Now, we need to understand where we're coming from as a nation. You remember last year we had elections, and uh, of course, the first presidential election was nullified. The mm -hmm. second, uh, second one, Raila never participated. The country was actually burning. So it's the handshake which led to some kind of peace whereby I think Kenyans now can be able to conduct their businesses, including this mass, without any problem. Mm -hmm. So there's value in the handshake. Mm -hmm. So what we need to talk about, okay, he's talked about maybe the structuring of the whole thing, that is okay, but we need to see the value of what happened. Now, Africa, African countries have not moved beyond the politics of personalities. That is where we are. Mm -hmm. So that is where if Raila, for example, today moves from ODM, it won't be a party, it will be a shell. If he goes to some other party and calls it Kamel, that is what actually will become mm -hmm. the part of the day. So we've not moved beyond the politics of personalities. That is what we, are, we have, and we have to accept it. Now, the handshake between the president and uh, Zoho was not expected, of course, given the insults, again, we witnessed a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. But again, you see, the president is in his legacy term, and Zoho is also finishing his second term as, as a governor. So when he looks forward, he does not see a reason why he's going, actually, he needs to antagonize the president. And then again, there's what we call the worship of party leaders. If Raila has said we go west, every person in ODM is going to go there. I, otherwise, you cooked. Mm -hmm. So Joe has to read from the same script as his party leader with Raila Odinga. Mm -hmm. The only danger is, as we stand today, Raila's political you know, clout is d diminishing. The Raila we, we used to know used to question every single scandal. It's no more. So the likes of Joe, who, you know, uh, towing his line, have to be very, very careful because he might lead them to oblivion, politically speaking. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Mark? The, <laughs> the reality of the handshake is without dispute. Mm -hmm. The reality that the temperatures in this country have since uh, gone down is without dispute. The reality that there is a committee that was formed to give findings, formed and gazetted, to give findings on how Kenya should move forward in terms of unity, in terms of the nine-point uh, agenda that was set out by uh, the Right Honorable Raila Odinga and His Excellency Ru Kenyatta is without dispute. Hmm. The amount of pessimism we have as a country concerning things that are even positive for us as a country is to me quite ridiculous. And it is a shame that we are on public TV trying to disparage a process whose only end is of benefit to this country. The reality of the matter, matter whether you are in ODM or you are in Jubilee or ANC or you are in Gar Garbatula National Party, whatever party you are in, uh -huh. the handshake was positive uh -huh. for this country. And we need to be able to see what is good and call it good. Uh, Banyani Mbaya, in other words, it does not matter how much you dislike Raila Odinga or you dislike Uhuru Kenyatta. The fact is, is that the handshake has changed things. It has changed things to the extent that instead of having funny news uh, during the launch of this particular road in Mombasa, we saw Governor Joho and, and Uhuru Kenyatta speaking peaceably. And that has a net effect on their supporters. It has a net effect on the nation. Mm -hmm. This positive ground cannot be taken away. And it is foolishness to be the kind of people who are always looking for negativity even when something is good for us as a country. It's good for us. What are, why are we fighting it? Mm -hmm. Why? I think the question is what what is going to be done beyond beyond this? But that's this kind that's of why action. there's a committee that mm -hmm. is sitting down, uh, working through the details and coming up with proposals which will be effected next year. Mm -hmm. It is being done. Yes, Kipchumba Abel has already mentioned that uh, Governor Joe, of course, is <coughs> he, he is in his final term. The president, of course, is also in his final term, and they've decided to come together and have that sort of an extended handshake. What are you reading in that? Yusuf, first of all. Let, uh, when we come to such a platform, it's a national platform, 
what we must not be allowed to pontificate mm -hmm. are positions which are devoid of principle mm -hmm. and uh, positions which run on the face mm -hmm. of uh, established systems. We are not uh, operating in the John Locke's state of nature. First of all, while I appreciate the positivity mm -hmm. that the handshake with the Raila, which were every handshake injected to us as a nation, there is an aspect of which we must understand that the handshake for it to happen, it means that there is a weakness in our systems. The handshake happening is not, uh, is not an ambit of a well-developing society. Mm -hmm. It is an ambit of weakness in society. Why am I saying that? Because if we had systems in place and respect institutions, that if an election is done today, I'm competing against an unchuary, and he beats me down by even 1%, I accept and say this is just the same way Hillary Clinton did with Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. That is why institutions are working. But for us, we are doing things in a cavalier manner, in a manner that I must win or there is nothing on the table. That primary school thinking that if it, is, if it is not my team scoring, I will go with the ball home. That is the <laughs> mentality that is in this handshake way of thinking. Uh -huh. Secondly, we must also, when politicians shake hands, I tremble in fear because what is happening behind them is what, is, what we should pay attention on. When politicians come together, they come together maybe because they are tenders, there are other things. What we get, the spillage is that there is public good, mm -hmm. but the bigger good is when politicians, the greater thing is their business things. Mm -hmm. So what we need to look at in an handshake, which must also, this is for scholars going forward. Mm -hmm. The scholars must interrogate it and come back and tell us what is moving. Mm -hmm. Handshake in itself is an undermining democracy. Mm -hmm. And the democratic pillars, a nation of this caliber has been set on. Mm -hmm. This nation has been set on the, the principle that one man, one vote. And if you win, you become the national leader. If I lose, I become the minority side, the opposition. Mm -hmm. Those are pillars that have been entrenched in a system. That's why we must appreciate the constitution as it is. Mm -hmm. For us to cut corners and say now people have shook hands, what have you, this country, and that's why when you read the introductory of the constitution, say we are giving ourselves this law and our children, mm -hmm. the future, posterity. Is handshake things for posterity? No, these are expedience things. If today you wake up in the morning, Joho, Raila Odinga, Ruto, William Ruto, Kalonzo Musioka are not there, there is no handshake. Mm -hmm. Its effect will be gone. But we must establish systems that work. Yes. Systems that mm -hmm. will be precede individuals. Mm -hmm. We have individualized things in this country. That's why we cannot have things moving around political parties. Because when you talk of ODM, we know it is Raila Odinga's political party. When we talk about Jubilee, we know it is a national party, but it has some people. Mm -hmm. In their thinking, they know it is owned by uh, the Uru Kenyatta and William Ruto. Yes. When you talk about ANC, we mm -hmm. know it is a Viga party owned by Mutalia Mudavadi. Mm -hmm. When we talk about the other one with a lion for Kenya, mm -hmm. it is owned by an, a gentleman with Angul. So, so we have to go, yeah. we need uh -huh. to move away from when you talk of a party, you see... It shouldn't be about individuals, yeah, we should yes. Look, mm -hmm. as I finish, mm -hmm. look for example to the Ukuru Wakos political party. That political party is known for positions, not even the people who own it. I do, it's called a third way alliance. Yeah. It is the only political party now, as we speak, mm -hmm. that comes forth to state national positions. The rest are already consumed in But the party has remained mum in the recent past. I don't know if I've heard anything about that party. They are that uh -huh. some good thing. They oh. have a referendum drive. <laughs> okay, thanks for reminding me. Dismas, I think you need to react to that. But at the same time, uh, Kipruto talks about Kipchumba. <laughs> <laughs> talks about something interesting. But these handshakes themselves need, need to be investigated. Uh, absolutely, and uh, he's, he's made a point which, in my view, uh -huh. is, uh, should go on record as a, a quote of the session. That when politicians have a conversation over a cup of tea and come out with a handshake, as a nation we should be very nervous. We mm -hmm. should be asking ourselves, what is the motivation behind that handshake? Whose interest is it representing? Is it representing those two politicians or the entire nation? And in my view, Intellectual curiosity and patriotism demands for every single Kenyan to ask questions. When a politician makes a statement, you're not being foolish by asking a question as Mark Bichachi is suggesting. You must ask questions. Mm -hmm. When Donald Trump went to Singapore to meet with Kim and Jang mm -hmm. to say that there is a handshake, 
there was a lot of uh, background work which was done. And even after the handshake, both Republicans and Democrats were asking questions that, Trump, you've gone all the way to Singapore, you've had a handshake with Kim Jong-un. What are you bringing home? Are you legitimizing but don't you a dictatorship? think the handshake between those two leaders have sort of eased the, t the tension between those two countries? I I'm not a medical doctor, but I'll tell you, mm -hmm. when a fellow is suffering from malaria, mm -hmm. you do not give them Panadol. Mm -hmm. You'll give them Panadol, the headache will disappear for a second. But believe you me, the plasmodium cells will come back and hit you. Mm -hmm. So as, as a nation, we need to ask ourselves, are we going to rely on handshakes? Look at uh, Raila Odinga. He's had three handshakes. Mm -hmm. So one would have expected that the first handshake would have placed Kenya on a very strong path towards democracy, that you don't need a handshake again. So for how long are we going to sit as a nation? Wait a minute. We are going to have an election in 2022. Are we going to say, OK, we don't know whether the IBC is going to run a free and fair election, but after all, after the election, <laughs> the two main guys are going to have a handshake, and then we go ahead. Kenya is a going concern. Mm -hmm. We are not going to be at the mercy of uh, two politicians with political capital. We need to, to trust in institutions that when IBC says, if I run against Mark Bichach and I give him a beating, when <laughs> IBC pronounces me as a winner, Everybody needs to go back home knowing that I've won. Uh -huh. When the Supreme Court nullifies an election, we are not supposed to start saying this is the Wakora network. So in my view, when you have people asking questions, it's because they want answers. And those answers enrich our democracy. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm actually very disappointed and uh, disgusted that a panelist can come on here and say that if you're asking questions, mm -hmm. you are being foolish. That if you're asking questions, mm -hmm. you are being a which, pessimist. Which, which panelist? No, Mark, Mark, I'll, no give, a to I'll no give you a chance to respond. I'll give you a chance to respond. I still have some more few minutes. A, a question, mm -hmm. a, a democracy that thrives <laughs> yeah. allows people to ask questions. I remember when I was training as a journalist, you were told, you're supposed to look at the hippo's nose. When you go for a news conference, mm -hmm. you see President Kenyatta and Raila Odinga having a handshake, you mm -hmm. ask yourself, what is the backstory? I mean, what has occasioned this handshake? Mm -hmm. So in my view, asking questions, in mm -hmm. fact, is a sign of patriotism. The deputy president himself is on record saying the people who ask us questions, mm -hmm. who criticize us, are in fact our number one supporters. Yes. L let me, let me, I let think me you've answer. mentioned Mark's Mark name me so, me, so many Mark, times. Eh? Yeah, let, let, me, him, let me just give you a chance to respond. What I am uh, talking about is pessimism. Mm -hmm. If you confuse pessimism with asking questions, this must please buy a dictionary. Mm -hmm. Pessimism is of no benefit. Your own statement is self-defeating. Because if you are saying that because there are no institutions, there should be no handshake, that does not make sense. Mm -hmm. There is no reason why we should be fighting the handshake when it's good for the country. That is a fact. Mm -hmm. it, did it lower temperatures? Yes, it did. So why are you fighting it? Say, yes. so, on top of the handshake, mm -hmm. add something. And say, on top of the, the handshake between Joho and Uhuru, add something. And for me, it is very clear. Mm -hmm. The people of Mom Mombasa got a road, they got an interchange that they did not have before mm -hmm. at that very handshake. Mm -hmm. So we can see those benefits at that very place. Yes. So you cannot say that because you did not get the institution you want, now Mark Bichachi is stopping you from So, so Mark, I think, I think you're very clear. You are addressing pessimism and not asking questions. Yes. Abel, Abel, please yes. come in between this yeah, yeah, yeah. individual. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, I cannot see why uh -huh. these guys are squabbling. Yeah. I think each is making a very valid point. Uh -huh. Now, uh, there's what you call, there's a developing concept called institutional idealism yeah. and another one called field facts. Now, when you talk about um, Kipchumba, what Kipchumba is talking about, yes. the complete confidence in institutions. Uh, let me bring a, an idea here that I think everyone here is uh, aware of. The US has been around for so many years, since 1776, and they've had problems up to date. The democracy is not completely uh, free from uh, problems. They have issues. Mm -hmm. As we speak today, African Americans and other people of color in the US have problems. So, and they are so old. Now, Kenya has been around for about 50 to 60 years. So you can ex not expect us to have very solid institutions that can, that can take care of our problems as they arise. That is why I don't want us to put so much confidence in the institutions we have because we don't have a culture of mm -hmm. actually obeying them. That is it. And that is where the value of the handshake comes in. If it's doing good for the nation, we need to support it. As Mark is saying, what we need to do beyond the handshake is to make sure it translates to benefits for the common mananchi. Mm -hmm. So each has a point. He's saying uh -huh. the handshake has to be questioned, which is it, it's OK. And he's saying beyond the handshake, mm -hmm. I mean, before the handshake, there were problems. After the handshake, we can see some kind of, there's a climate of, you know, um, let's call it um, calm. Mm -hmm. 
where mm. you can operate, you can do business. We can have now a chance of questioning everything, including the runaway corruption. Mm -hmm. We can't do that in a climate of fights, protests, riots, and other, you know, funny things like we witnessed after the election. Mm -hmm. So I don't, think, I don't think you guys have an issue that you need to be fighting over. It's yes. not there. I think you've become a diplomat there. Yeah. Now, okay, Chumba, uh, can you perhaps tell us if, as much as you've said that these things need to be investigated, don't you think it has brought some, time, uh, some, some sort of a calmness, you know, easiness within, within the country, politically speaking? When we talk about, yes, there's calm, and that's why I said mm -hmm. the collective good... Or it's a calm good, before, before major stop. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> the collective good uh -huh. of the handshake cannot be under, underestimated. Mm -hmm. It is a good thing. Mm -hmm. But my questioning was towards the longevity, sustainability, uh -huh. and consistency. We cannot be a nation of handshakes. We should be a nation whereby we value more things than just handshakes. Mm -hmm. Look at it this way today. <laughs> Tomorrow you have a politician, a typical egoistic politician, mm -hmm. who loses an election and brings his whole community and his, the courts in town. Mm -hmm. And they refuse to do a handshake. They say, all we want is we want to occupy state house or you give us a half of the state house. Yeah. What will you do to this country? You will not have a country. But if we have solid institutions, and mm -hmm. that's why if we are saying we have relative calm now, let us use that calm mm -hmm. to build institutions. I disagree with... Mr. Ochwari, mm -hmm. completely. When we say this country is 60 years, mm -hmm. we need to have institution we do not believe in. Rwanda mm -hmm. is, our, is more younger than us. After the genocide in 1994, they are stable. We have countries here which institutions are stronger than us. South mm -hmm. Africa, mm -hmm. uh, they have institutions. So when we talk about we should, what we need to do, mm -hmm. let us give them time, nurture them. Mm -hmm. But let us not... On top of them, we are opening with handshakes, uh, yes. and we are give, we are allowing let IBC. Me let me, I think, let me I think finish. when you said on Twitter, you are referring to Abel. Yes, right? uh -huh. yeah, <laughs> I, I, he, will, he will answer. Yes. Uh -huh. If we are now to, mm. in the next few months, mm -hmm. we are having national census and uh, boundary delimitation. We all we are frenzying now is the handshake. There is a problem at uh, Lillian Towers at IBC. Mm -hmm. Nobody is addressing himself to the problems. And that, that institution is undergoing. Mm -hmm. And that is the institution that we will expect it to share, to, to make sure, to delimit boundaries in this country, to give us, to tell us from here to here it will be Wajia West, mm -hmm. from here to here it will be this. And what are we doing? Yes, the handshake is there. It is a process that should be supported, but it should not be supported at the expense of institutions. Mm -hmm. Another thing. Yes, please, very briefly. What does the handshake do to the competitiveness of ideas? If today, and we must agree, Raila Odinga as a statesman, he has been fighting corruption, and if, if Raila was to be in the opposition today properly, we would have had more meat in terms of these scandals than we have. He will be doing pressers after every one hour at Capitol Hill. But their bodies were supposed to do that yes, job, right? But, but, but uh -huh. listen, what, what, uh -huh. Raila, let, let, let me give Mark and... Uh, Actually, I'm about to call him on Chuari as well. Abel, yeah. a minute each because we have to go for a break and we have to talk about a lot of other things like the budget. Let me give you a minute first. Mm. Yeah, my name is on Chuari. Eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, but that is not even important. <laughs> <laughs> Point number one, IBC is headquartered at Anniversary Towers, not Lillian Towers. Mm -hmm. Those are number two, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. unfortunate mm -hmm. that Kiptivu can give us Rwanda as a, an example of uh, you know, a successful and stable democracy. Rwanda is a dictatorship. Can I say it again? Rwanda You're entitled to your own opinion. Yes. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, there's evidence. Mm -hmm. That is it. Mm -hmm. Every single election, Kagame gets up to 98%. And and opponents are intimidated but and scared. But at least you went attacked. there to benchmark on the Just collecting a moment. garbage. Mm -hmm. That is not... Uh, <laughs> forget about that. Number two, when we talk about um, <clears throat> the, what I talked about earlier, field facts versus institutional idealism. You believe our institutions can work, but you know very well we don't have the culture of uh, respecting institutions. So what do we do? Now, the field facts tell us we are not yet at a point where we can respect institutions. So what do we do? We work with what we have. That is where the handshake comes in. Once again, beyond the handshake, now we have the climate, which can allow us to work. The guys who are involved mm -hmm. and concerned should be able to do something. Then number three, Raila is not uh, ESCC. So we shouldn't be questioning why it's quiet over the so many corruption scandals we're seeing around. Yes, neither is it the DCI in the rest. I think you've let, delivered let, your point. Let, let, let yes. me, Mark, let me just, you have a let, minute as well. Let, let mm -hmm. me point out 
the war on corruption is not an opposition leader uh, holding a press conference and telling the country what happened. The war on corruption actually, by Raila's own admission, is the opposition working together with the national government to fight against corruption because that's where you get the goodwill. Let's not forget that how corruption used to be fought is it used to be have sides. Mm -hmm. So there's a Kikuyu side to corruption, then we defend our people, <laughs> then there's a Kalenjin side to corruption, we defend our people, then there's a Luo side to corruption. Once, for once in our lifetime, we've seen corruption with all manner of names, and not a single tribe has stood up. Mm -hmm. So the reality of the matter is this, that this handshake is good for the country. And let's remember, you do not need an opposition. This, our constitution did not even envision an opposition. We have a minority. It is not by opposition that ideas are fronted. Mm -hmm. Ideas can be fronted even between a man and a woman. Otherwise, Kipchumba, when you get married, you'll divorce your wife every day, because she'll disagree many okay. times. Okay, okay, let's, let's <laughs> focus on something that is totally uh, Different. And we're going to talk about the budget shortly, and uh, that is about the 2018-2019 uh, uh, 3.07 trillion Kenya shilling budget. We'll have that and much more after this very short break. Stay with us. We'll be right back.